Hello and welcome to this video. Today we are looking at a brand new piece of shiny kit. You know what it is because you've seen the thumbnail and the title of this video, so uh, let's get on with it. Roll titles! Yeah, that's right. You might have noticed that the past few videos that I've filmed here have looked slightly different. That's because my Canon M50 has gone. It's gone to the great camera shop in the sky. It hasn't, it hasn't died. I've actually traded it in because I wanted to upgrade it. I really did like the Canon M50, mostly. It, it served me well. It's made literally hundreds of vlogs and videos at this desk. But one of the largest problems with it was the autofocus was a bit bobbins. And also you couldn't get a clean HDMI out. So when I was recording things or streaming at my desk, I had to have the camera in manual focus to get a nice clean HDMI out. And that is less than ideal because I don't always necessarily stand in exactly the same place. I'm not always in the same position and dicking about and changing the settings each time I want to film something was just a bit of a ball ache. So I've sent that off and I have got myself this. This is the EOS M6 Mark II camera. I'm not gonna lie, it's probably the most expensive bit of equipment I own, but thankfully, there was a fair bit of value left in my uh, Canon M50, so uh, I didn't have to spend as much as that, but I did have to spend a fair bit. Uh, you know, it'll be worth it, I'm sure. I use, it, I use cameras a lot. The more videos I'm making, the more I want to make them better and improve and make them look good. So I want to have a decent camera and this looks like it could be the one for me. So yeah, I'm kind of itching to get this out the box now. So uh, let's go over to the table and get this out the box. Canon EOS, ugh, Canon EOS, I can't, I'm so excited I can't talk properly. This is the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. It's got a 32.5 megapixel sensor it does 4K video, it's got dual pixel autofocus, it's got eye detection autofocus, it's got a three inch LED and it also has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to get your pictures off it. So yeah, this is, uh, this is it and I cannot wait to get it open. So uh, let's do it. Now you will notice that I have opted for the version without the lens um, because I've already got a uh, EFM lens, which is... Uh, right here so uh, yeah i've already got a lens for it and also i've got an adapter which converts all my ef and efs lenses down to the efm mount which this has so i've got a lot of lenses so i thought i'll just uh, get the body itself so uh, what do we have in the box okay so we've got the getting started guide which uh, covers every language under the sun and a few more and uh, we've got the uh, warranty card. Pretty standard stuff. I'm excited. I'm really excited, as I've said several times. Okay, so uh, I'm not, I'm not going to get it out straight away. I'm going to see what other bits and bobs we have with it first. So, uh, yeah, that's just a standard UK plug with a uh, figure of eight adapter on it. And then what is this? Okay, so this is the battery charger. This is the LC-E17E. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. I got it right. There we go. So, uh, yeah, figure of eight lead plugs into there. Charge light, full light, battery. Pretty straightforward. You all know how a battery charger works. I hope you do anyway. Then what else do we have? We've got this, aha. So this is just the uh, neck strap. The EOS M ones always seem to come with these sort of slightly thinner ones. I prefer the chunkier ones. Um, but to be fair, I don't really use a neck strap. But you know, that's okay. That'll probably just stay in the package. Oops. Oh, yep, okay, so. What is this? So this is the battery pack. This is the LP E17. I 
think that's the same as the uh, EOS M50. Pretty certain it is. Hope so, because I've got lots of those knocking about. And then here it is. It is time for the beast itself. Let's move this. I'll tell you what, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so we can uh, fully appreciate this bad boy. There she blows. Look at that. Look at that. What a beauty that is. I like that it's small and compact, but it's not too small and compact. And it just, I don't know, it looks like a proper camera. I like this sort of rubberized finish on it. It kind of reminds me of my dad's old school cameras. They always tend to have this kind of rubbery stuff on it. Um, so yeah, this is the front. Obviously, that's where the lens goes. That's a, uh, that's a button to release the lens and that's some sort of uh, red eye reduction lamp, maybe. And then on the bottom, we have got the uh, tripod screw. We've got the battery compartment, which is where the SD card goes as well. And also it's got this cool rubber grommet. Yeah, man, it's got a rubber grommet. And basically you can put a dummy battery in here and put a power supply straight into the dummy battery through that rubber grommet. I did that on my, e, uh, my M50, very handy. So um, on this side here, we've just got a micro, I think that's a micro HDMI and a uh, USB-C adapter. Thank the Lord, a camera with a USB-C adapter. And I believe you can charge the battery through that um, USB-C socket there. It is a bit fussy about the power supply that uh, is powering it, but you can charge so that is really handy and something I'm going to investigate further. I want to go for the back, but I'm just going to go for the other side now, just so we can uh, see what's going on here. So uh, we've got a flash button. Flash! Ah! Kind of almost feel like it needs a bit of uh, slow motion there. Voila! That comes up with quite some veracity. Kind of reminds me of... Um, like Wally or uh, Johnny Five from the Short Circuit films. Yeah, so you've got the flash pop-up button there and the panel that is hiding the 3.5mm uh, mic jack and the 2.5mm-ish um, remote jack. So let's look at the back then. This is where all the magic happens. So uh, we've got a range of buttons and dials and also, quite unusually, a uh, switch for manual and autofocus here on the back. I like that because in theory you can like, lock off your focus in autofocus mode and whack it over to manual and that will keep it there. You know standard Canon button setup and yeah it's got this uh, cool screen that flips up like that or you can pull it out and have it like that or you can just flip it fully up and there you go, you've got your self-filming vlogging camera right there. But there's a problem, and we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, I like the way this screen articulates. It's quite, um, it's quite cool. I don't, I think all my cameras I've sort of pretty much had since articulating screens were a thing, have them folding out to the side. So, I don't know. I'm tending to use monitors now with my filming, so I guess it's not such a big deal, but. We'll see how we go with this uh, floppy out, floppy out, yeah, it's floppy out screen. And uh, yeah, so on the top, we've got the sort of standard mode dials. We've got shutter button, little uh, dial there, and we've got the dial, the function dial up here as well. So all, it all feels very nice and tactile. It's, it's quite a nice camera to hold in your hands. The, the grip's quite strong. And this doesn't have um, image stabilization within the camera. It can use your uh, lens image stabilization, but yeah, there's no in-camera IS. Um, I think it's got electronic IS um, in it, but yeah, there's no sort of optical IS. So having a good grip or using a gimbal really will help this get nice, steady, smooth shots. 
So also here you've got a um, hot shoe mount for a flash or there is an optional viewfinder that you can buy for this because as you can see it doesn't have a viewfinder. Um, but the problem is if you want to put anything in here like a flash or a uh, microphone like the Rode Wireless Go 2 which I've been looking at recently, when you flip that up there's an issue isn't there? You can't get to it, but there is a way around that, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but yeah, it's just such a nice feeling camera. I've seen people complain about this being quite tight, uh, sorry, quite loose. It actually feels pretty tight, really. Hmm. I like this. Okay, well, um, yeah, so what I was going to say about the... Um, oh, no, can't really lay it down like that because you've got the screen there. I don't think it's even got a protector on. I have to get a screen protector for that. Stat. So uh, this is what I'm going to use to overcome the problem with the uh, lack of uh, mounting. And this is a small rig, small rig, small rig um, case. Now I've got these on for all of my cameras and I really love them because they just come with a load of mounting holes and basically you can build them up. There's lots of different accessories that come with them and you can just add handles and monitor mounts and things like that. And they, these are all just standard screws. And also this one doubles as an Arca plate. I don't know how easy it is to see, but it's got the standard sort of Arca mounting on, which means you don't need to add something else to the bottom to put it into a tripod with an Arca compatible mount. It's just there. But also what they add are some cold shoe mounts. So we've got one here and we've got one here. So you can add like a monitor arm coming off of it through there or you can just clip in your Rode Wireless Go or any other microphone that doesn't need a hot shoe mount. So, and that means that you can still use the screen flapped up and articulated up but without any of the drama. So in theory, it goes in like that. And then it actually comes with this uh, handy screwdriver. There we go, sit it in properly, and screw it in position. So instantly, you've still got the uh, hot shoe mount that's usable on there, should you want it or you can flip up the screen if you're not using it. And then you've got the cold shoe mounts for attaching microphones and stuff on there. I mean, probably the side one's more suitable, but you've got all these screw holes to attach different accessories on and to mount it on. So small rig things with your camera are so handy. And um, yeah, I thoroughly recommend them. They're all really well made. And also, I love the fact that you've got this little uh, screwdriver to take it in and out, um, just attached to it. And also, you can still access all the ports, all the buttons, and change the batteries. It's not, it's not in the way. So yeah, I'll uh, add a link to that in the description. Um, but I guess we can uh, power this bad boy on. So um, let's do that. Ah, I need an SD card. This is where we find out that the battery doesn't actually have any charge. <laughs> Label facing into the battery. Right, so we need a lens. Right, we need a lens. Sorry, headphone listeners. There we go. So, there we have it. Um, now. <laughs> Let's see if there's battery power. Yay, we have power. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. So what I've learned is uh, 
it isn't the same battery that the M50 takes, <laughs> which is annoying. So uh, yeah, that's annoying. Okay, well, I guess what that means is we'll have to have a play with this in another video. And uh, I've got to wait a while for my toy to charge up. So uh, let's go back to the desk and uh, finish up. So there we go, it's out of the box and I love it. I'm really happy with it. There's just so, I've been playing with the menus and stuff and there's just so much to learn and to get to grips with. You know, there was quite a lot on the M50, but there's just loads more on the M6 and I've just got to try and get used to it. So I apologize if the next few videos are a bit imperfect, I guess, um, but I will try my best to get my head around it. But I imagine I'll do some proper test videos. I'm gonna take it out on the gimbal, I think once I've got my head around it all and uh, yeah, just see how it all goes. So if there's anything you want to know specifically about the EOS M6 Mark II, then do let me know. And also I need to get myself a new DC coupler so I can plug it into the mains up there and uh, yeah, have, use it to film at my desk again. So I've got to get a few bits and bobs before I can use it properly, but I'm definitely excited to try it out. So yeah. If you want to help out and support this channel, then you can become a Patreon or you can just click on the join button, which I think is down there somewhere. And uh, that would really help me out. Um, you can join for as little as 99p a month and then it all kind of ramps up and you get some benefits in return either way. So yeah, I'd really appreciate that, but don't feel you have to, it's just optional. You can just subscribe, subscribing is free. You don't have to pay for that or you know, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you fancy, it's all good. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. As I said, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll be back soon for some more vlogging fun. See ya.